According to certain philosophical readings of the coronavirus crisis, medical science became the only surviving religion. This view is at least inaccurate. During Eastern celebrations, uh, according to Auditel, the Italian Audience Measurement Society, a million and a half spectators followed the mass celebrated on weekdays by the Pope at 7 o'clock a.m. 15 million contacts followed the Palm Sunday Mass. On March the 27th, 27 million contacts followed the Urbi et Orbi blessing. Italian people, usually described as on the run from the faith, showed a renewed interest toward religion. Thus, the virtual mass is a success in terms of communication. Not surprisingly, many of these spectators attended mass less than once a month. Thus, the virtual mass has a great potential as the pastoral function is concerned. It is not a surprise that, during pandemics, people rediscover religion and ethical values. It is an understandable answer to the crisis of the world of their experience and its meaning. The philosopher Edmund Husserl speaks about a naturalistic reading of the meaning of the world. It is precisely this world view that enters a crisis, forcing a people to search for meaning outside the world, in a transcendent semantic universe that it is supposed to be the source of value. The axiological opposition between conservative and progressives belongs to the political discourse. In a certain sense, its application to religious discourse is always ideological. The logic of innovation in religion implies the rediscovery of a, a forgotten tradition. For example, the Pope has a Latin channel on Twitter. The same happened with the spiritual communion. After all, the problems posed by the quarantine to spiritual life are definitely not new. At the end of 13th century, Meister Eckhart wrote but should a man have some compunction, and if, on account of your preoccupation, he cannot go to confession, let him go to his God, confess himself guilty with true repentance, and be at peace until he has a chance to go to confession. To answer to this well-known anthropological problems, the Church mobilized extraordinary means, such as the Urbi et Orbi benediction, the rite of drawing St. Michael's sword, the exposure of the Holy Road in Turin, the transfer of the Blessed Virgin of St. Luca in Bologna, constructing a completely new topography of the crisis, in line with the extraordinary times we are living in. Michael, Michael Bakhtin would call it a chronotope, which substituted the ordinary space-time of our experience. Starting from the Second Vatican Council, Catholic Church became aware of the great potential of media as the pastoral function is concerned. In 1963, the decree Intermirifica lays the foundation of the teaching and pastoral activity of the Church in societal communication. Thus, I am surprised that certain philosophers had to wait for the coronavirus to realize that the Catholic Church is online on YouTube. According to these philosophers, we have split the unity of our life experience, which is always inseparably bodily and spiritual, in a purely biological entity on one side, and in an affective and cultural life on the other. And they blame Pope Francis because he uncritically accepted this separation. Ironically, Pope Francis precisely expressed the same concern during the homily of March the 17th. The risk is to base salvation on individual illumination rather than on the collective participation to the liturgy. In fact, Iterating the logic of broadcasting, YouTube constructs an individual actor, a passive mass of monadic viewers, rather than a collective actor, 
it has an active community, to misquote Edith Stein. Quite interestingly, new worshippers that discover faith toward the aesthetic pleasure of uh, the virtual liturgy are the most exposed to the risk to become isolated modans. To this purpose, it is really interesting how the Italian National Liturgy Office prepared special resources to celebrate the religious fest in the family. For example, these resources foresee a celebrant without specifying the gender. As every crisis involving technology and media, the Covid should not lead us to adopt an apocalyptic point of view. As Umberto Echoes warned us during the 60s, once again apocalypse will be postponed.